This video is sponsored by Blueland. So you hopped on the dark bedroom train. You're dark and moody, so you figured this bedroom could be too. But that dark reality sets in and you realize your window just doesn't quite let in enough light. You've had to switch the lovely warm ceiling light for daylight bulbs to see in the day. It hurts your soul, doesn't it? Oh dear, if only this room was brighter to reflect that minimal daylight. You need to start over, don't you? <sighs> Editor, roll the tape. Boop. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. We are in a echoey room. <laughs> so I apologize for the bad sound. I would just like to start off by saying, I do love this room. I love the dark vibe. I have loved the dark vibe since the room has become a dark vibe. But uh, unfortunately, things just need to change. After the holidays, having many people stay in this room, I think the constant feedback that I got was the fact that because it's so dark, it's just really hard to see in here. You know, things are always getting left behind because people are leaving things in places because there's just a lot of dark nooks and crannies in here formed by this dark room and lack of light from the window. Because I have to put a daylight bulb in here just to be able to see properly, it takes away from everything that this room was meant to bring, which was kind of like a dark, cozy cave. And when I turn this light on, it is like a Dementor has come for my soul. It is sucking the life out of me. <laughs> anymore and don't get me wrong like I do have vibey lights in here that go up on the two bedside tables there's also this light back here which is very vibey but uh, it it doesn't create enough lighting at nighttime to really be able to see in this room like it's vibey okay <laughs> So if we are going to make over this bedroom again, because it has been made over twice now, uh, you know, I'm going to do the one thing that I have wanted to do from the beginning of moving into this house, which is taking out this closet. This closet right here, I hate it. I don't want it. It takes up a lot of space in this small bedroom and uh, I just wanted to be gone, but don't worry. Don't worry, I have solutions. We are not getting rid of storage, so stay with me, okay? I have a plan. We are going to make this room bright. We are going to add storage and we are going to make this room a place that feels inviting and lovely and warm and cozy that people wanna spend time in, including myself. And yes, the secret door is staying. So before I start any renovations within this room, the first thing I need to do is take out this closet because this is gonna be the biggest part of the project, the biggest mess, and gonna take the most time to clean up to get us back to a place where the room is functional again. So my first step is going to be to take the trim off, remove the inside guts, cause the shelves are still in here. And then I'm gonna take a knife and I need to cut along the roof on the inside and the outside of the closet and any of the lines um, that meet up with another wall. I'm doing that because I wanna break the drywall so that when I go to tear out the wall, it's not going to affect any drywall that I still want intact. And the thing I'm really hoping for is that we don't find any more mouse poop. <laughs> All I'm saying is we're gonna be doing a lot of cleaning, but while I'm taking this closet out, all of its guts and taking down the walls, I figured this is a great time to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Blue Land. All right, so voiceover Danny coming in here. So side context story. I recently had the pleasure of traveling to Roatan, Honduras this year. It's a beautiful island filled with beautiful people. But one thing I did notice was the amount of garbage that would be piled along the beach lines. It's not that I'm naive to this as an issue around the world, but when you see it in front of you like that, it just feels like it hits on another level. When we left those images, they just 
really stuck with me. I knew then I could be doing better. I mean, I'm not a perfect human, but there are many things I've already done to reduce my single use plastic footprint, such as using a reusable water bottle versus buying plastic ones, reusable bags, reusable cutlery, straws. But you know, I just, I knew I could be doing more in my home that will help make a positive impact on our planet. Now, of course, Blueland was a company I'd already been speaking to before I went to Honduras, but admittedly, I felt kind of a new sense of ownership over this conversation and I felt like I was on a mission to bring better products into my home. So I'm excited to share why Blueland is so important in this new mission of mine and also I do love cleaning so this all really excites me on many levels. First off, Blue Lint's mission is simple and very much aligned with my mission. Make it easy to be eco with products in reusable packaging that are convenient, effective, and affordable. I mean, huzzah! So Blue Lance sent me their Clean Essentials Kit that includes a reusable foam hand soap container along with their fully compostable earth-friendly package tablet in the scent Lemon. I have a pink reusable bathroom cleaner bottle with a bathroom cleaner tablet. A blue reusable glass and mirror bottle with the glass and mirror cleaner tablet. And a multi-surface reusable cleaner with the multi-surface cleaner tablet. Then I also got this dishwasher starter kit which comes with this tin holder and a package of dishwasher detergent tablets. All their products are planet friendly and Blue Lint uses no single use plastic in any component from bottles, tablets and wrappers to shipping. Their tablet packaging is fully compostable. I also like that you can save money and buy refills in bulk or set up a subscription which can be customized so that you never run out of your most used products. They also have a bunch of other cleaning products available, so go check it out. Blueland is sharing a special offer just for you. All you have to do is click the link in my description box that looks like this, or you can use the QR code on screen here to get 15% off your first kit. All right, so I'm almost done tearing away this closet, and then I think I'm gonna be needing some of those cleaners in here. <laughs> Woof. Okay, friends, we've done some demo. <laughs> and boy, do I love doing demo. This is what we're left with. So we have basically just the framing. I actually took one piece of the framing out that was here. I just wanted to see how hard it was gonna be to take it out or if I was gonna need some more heavy duty tools, but I seem to be doing okay. I probably will need my reciprocating saw just to get some of the bigger pieces out just because most of these two by fours were toenailed in, which means that there's a big, giant nail that was just jammed like sideways from the corner here up into the top two by four. So it's a bit of a nightmare to try to get out, but you just do the best you can. Now, here's the bad news. Come into my office. So I had a vent that was on this side of the wall here, and I knew to expect that because of this bulkhead here. But what I wasn't expecting was the fact that the vent has a T-bar here, and it actually connects into the main bedroom and then goes down into the living room. I thought, that this was gonna be closer to the inside of the wall, but it's not. So that does kind of ruin some of my plans, but I don't know, I'm gonna wait till Jeffrey gets home and we'll talk about some options. I feel like that's gonna be a multi-brain brainstorm. A multi-brainstorm. So my goal right now is to just get all the framing out. Um, this is really great two by four lumber. So I'm gonna be needing this to rebuild some of the walls, which is great. So I can keep a lot of this lumber, um, but yeah, we're just gonna start taking it out one piece at a time. And uh, soon we're gonna have a much larger room. <laughs> so excited.
good news. I found Mo's poop. Hey. Okay, friends, I'm in the truck. I got Pop Pop with me. We're going to the dump. Pop Pop actually loves going to the dump. It's his favorite place because they always give him cookies there. <laughs> but I managed to get everything that I want to throw out, all the crappy drywall and all the metal uh, corner brackets in. We're gonna go to Home Depot, get some drywall to, to fix the wall tomorrow, and then uh, we keep moving forward. So I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Good morning friends. I did get a head start this morning and just wanted to kind of start doing some things before I really started rolling here. Um, and that was adding in the support beam up top and then also getting the vapor barrier back in. Uh, I don't normally know if I needed the vapor barrier, but I definitely know that I cut through it and you're kind of defeating the point of the vapor barrier if it's got a bunch of cuts and slashes in it. So I did just want to reinforce it a little bit up there. So there are a few things that I need to do today before I can even start doing the fun stuff stuff, which I'm not even sure what the fun stuff is at this point. <laughs> I need to get the drywall up. So what I'm gonna need to do is just cut back this drywall piece and then I'm gonna have a beam so I can connect my drywall onto. And then once we get this piece on, I can also get the top drywall on. What I need to do is I have a small gap here and instead of cutting this like weird oblong shape that I gotta fit into the ceiling, I'm actually just going to cut this back with my uh, multi-tool and just make it a nice square. That way I can just cut a nice square, fit it up, and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. The other thing is, we were talking about the vent yesterday. So good news is, Jeff and I last night came up with a plan. So this, we're gonna be taking all of this completely out and I'm going to be adding the vent into the floor. So as you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, my living room has an open floor and <laughs> we can see the vent that uh, runs into these two bedrooms. So we were able to see how much space we had and if we were gonna be able to actually like run the vent up and over into our main bedroom bedroom and it looks like we can. So I'm gonna be pulling all that out. And then once I get the hole for the new vent, I can actually go get some more flooring and then we can start putting some new flooring down to just make this look nice and uniform. I love doing demo. I love taking apart my house and putting it back together. I know that sounds wild to say out loud, but since taking apart my house from the beginning, I feel like I've become so much better at my job just because I understand how things are built. You know, I think it makes me less afraid to tear out closets because I know that I can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And there's always a way. There's always a way. <laughs> Let's start pulling out some drywall, shall we? The next thing I want to do now is get this thing out, which uh, is kind of challenging because they have little screws that are holding it together. So I got to find out where the screws are, remove those, and then I should be okay. I mean, the rest of this is being held together by duct tape. So that's awesome. <laughs> So like I mentioned, if you haven't seen my living room transformation a long time ago, I pulled down the ceiling and exposed all these beautiful joists in the house. What have I done? 
This house is very old. Hey. It's definitely older than Canada, <laughs> which means it's 150 plus years. So it definitely had some beautiful architecture uh, attached to it, which these ceiling joists are just stunning. So I wanted to bring that out. Now, as you can see, this piece is what was running into the bedroom. So this is the hole here. And this is the new piece that I'm going to be attaching. So this is going to be the floor vent opening that I'm going to have to trace onto the ceiling and then I'm going to have to cut out a new hole. But luckily what we didn't realize yesterday was just how wide these each joists were between each other. So that means that we can put a T-bar in this piece here and then have a little 90 degree joint and then run it into the main bedroom as well. So we're going to actually create two floor vents instead of having them on the walls, which they were not working very well. We did not get good airflow naturally. I mean, now seeing how badly that was connected, there's a reason for that. But I do need to take down this giant piece that's being connected right here. And then I can pop this up. I'm going to trace this. We're going to drill four holes uh, so that I know where to uh, use my jigsaw upstairs. And then I'm just basically going to cut a hole where this is going to fit into. And then we can start working on the walls and the flooring. Perfect. All right, now that we have a hole in our floor, we can move on, <laughs> which I genuinely thought is something I'd never say, but all of this flooring needs to come out because we are going to put in a new set of flooring, which I am so glad I had extra flooring. I just knew that this was gonna be a thing that I wanted in my life eventually. So having the extra flooring to be able to fill these spots in as they come um, has been, it's been great. So I basically have to pull out anything that's kind of connecting this way, which is gonna be a bit of a nightmare because I'm gonna have to slide it out. Of course, this was not gonna be as easy as I wanted it to be. Come on, here we go, there we go. You got this. Yes. Yes. It's like you knew exactly which piece I needed to come out. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so happy. I think this is the part of the reno where, you know, we stop caring how things look because we're just a sweaty hot mess. <laughs> I was able to take my hat off finally. I'm not afraid of mouse poop falling on me. Ugh. I was actually the most worried about the flooring. So having that done, just like, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder. So I'm really happy. <laughs> I have all my drywall sheets up here. So I'm basically just gonna start cutting my drywall sheets and then adding them onto the wall and then doing the bottom first and then I can stack the top. And uh, I think this process is gonna go very quickly and then we can basically start mudding. Putting drywall up is super easy. You just wanna make sure that the seams are nice and tight together because when you go to mud, you really don't wanna have to fill in big gaps. Cutting drywall is so easy. All you need is a knife. You're just gonna score along Line, and then the gypsum board just basically cracks. So you just, it's a really simple process. As long as you have proper drywall screws and you don't go drive the screw right through the drywall, you wanna just like basically make it flush with the drywall. Um, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna get started and uh, let's say goodbye to open walls. <laughs>
Okay, so VO Danny dropping in here. Uh, for anyone who cares to know about drywalling, I mean, maybe this whole topic is dry. <laughs> no? Okay. I did just want to say that most drywall sheets will come in 4 by 8 sizes, which would have been great for this wall to get a large area covered quickly. But as you can see, I'm working with 4 by 4 sheets and I wanted to explain why. So the day I went to go pick up the drywall, it was pouring rain and uh, drywall and water, not a great combo. So I actually ended up cutting them into four by four squares at the hardware store so that they would fit inside my truck. And then sadly the four feet wouldn't fit the entire length of the wall. So I had to make them into smaller chunks uh, because the goal here is to ensure that the edges of your drywall always land on a stud so that they can be secured properly. You know, looking back, I kind of wish I had just measured that entire section and then cut that to fit into my truck if it worked. Uh, but you know, I went with four by four to keep it easy at the hardware store. This is what it was. So I'm just making them into smaller chunks to accommodate that. But uh, yeah, this dry drywall combo is out. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Yesterday was intense for me because I was just like, sometimes doing these projects by yourself can be very challenging. You know, I have to say this is not my best drywalling. As we all know, many homes are very wonky. There's no such thing as a straight line, a straight wall. And uh, yesterday proved it. I was doing this side here and what I didn't realize is that this wall is much taller than uh, it basically tapers upwards. And I didn't realize that when I made my measurement and then all of a sudden I had to add this little extra piece up here or it was just gonna be a nightmare. That was not an ideal situation. The good news is I am an excellent mutter. <laughs> Over time and time and time, I have become very good at mudding to hide all of these crummy mistakes. Oh my goodness. So this morning I went and bought some of this. So this is corner trim. It's got a little metal piece in the corner to basically give it a really uh, rigid edge. And then it has the tape on the sides that you can mud over and then basically just feather it out. So my plan is I'm gonna add a little bit of mud here then I'm gonna put my tape on top and then I'm gonna put more mud on top of that. And then I basically feather out the mud so that it becomes like, basically you just feather it out until it just gradually becomes nothing. Then we have the corner tape that I'm going to use on the ceiling trim or the ceiling corners up here. And that's just gonna make the corners look really nice. And I'm also gonna be using it on the corner here. Mudding isn't sexy, but if you do it right, boy, is it sexy, you know? <laughs> Don't forget to click like and subscribe <laughs> if you're having a great time. So let's start mudding. Oh yeah. Don't eat this. Okay, here we go. I'll go to this wall before I start on the ceiling because I am going to get tired if I put my hands above my head for that long. Okay, 
I just finished the first coat. Not gonna lie, that took a while. <laughs> But, you know, it looks all right. I mean, what's gonna happen now is I have to let this fully dry. I need to give it a light sanding and then I'm going to mud the entire thing over again. It is not nearly ready to be fully sanded yet. Um, you know, I can still see some of the tape in some area, but I really don't wanna pack it on super thick because it becomes so much harder to sand. So I'd rather do lots of light coats versus one giant thick coat that makes it just awful to try to sand. So I'm learning from my mistakes. <laughs> Although this way feels like it's gonna take me longer, in the long run, I'm gonna be thanking myself because it's gonna look better. So. It's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, right now we are playing the waiting game. just did the last light sand this morning, cleaned everything up, got the floors clean, got all this drywall dust off, cleaned down the walls. Should've been a lot of work, but she'll be worth it, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I have here, it's basically just like a primer. It's not great to just go and paint right over top of this. It's a little bit absorbent, so this primer is gonna be great. And you can use any primer, honestly. Honestly, I believe you probably could just use any primer. All right, I am going to get a layer of this primer on. I find this is like kind of the best part because we get to see how it's gonna kind of look all together. It's so hard to tell how this corner looks when you see all this, you know, mudding and sanding and all this crap on top of it. So I'm excited. So let's start painting. <laughs> Well, friends, we have most certainly removed a closet. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but like that was not easy to mud. And I think it looks pretty darn good. There's actually, I'm gonna admit this, there's one spot I'll even show you right here that I'm not that happy with. I might wanna finesse this area a little bit, but other than that, I think I'm like pretty happy with this. I am so excited to transform this room. I'm also really excited to like actually build things that are gonna go into this space with my own two hands. And comment down below if there's anything you would love to see in this space. I'd love to hear your opinions. Also, a big thank you again to the sponsor of today's episode, Blue Land. A reminder to use the link in my description box to get 15% off your first kit. Go now. Also sending so much love to my Patreon family. If you are looking for a place to celebrate the world of DIY, celebrate your DIY, share your DIYs, get advice. My Patreon is definitely the place for you. My videos are also offered to you ahead of time, brand free, commercial free. So if you're looking to just enjoy my videos and you want to give me a little support, definitely go and check out my Patreon. Of course, my friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, love your magic, and I'll see you next week. Woohoo! Bedroom makeover! Let's go! Bye-bye. <laughs>